Okay, so let's start with the dynamic malware analysis. So this is our sample here. And what we want to do is we want to open two tools. That's Process Hacker is one. And the other one is Procmon. Procmon needs to run with the administrative rights. So we just gave it the password since this is not a user that is an administrator on this machine. Okay, uh, let's switch that off for a second. We don't want to capture processes just yet. What we want to do is we want to move to our Remnux machine. Basically, both machines, the Windows 10 and Remnux, are in an isolated environment. They don't have connection to the internet. They are living in uh, on my host machine uh, and their virtual machines connected with the VMware workstation software. Um, and I've made, I've set up the lab in a way that Windows 10, uh, once, if it wants to get out to the internet, it has to go through Remnux. Uh, I gave the Remnux machine as an IP address for the DNS, for the gateway. Um, so basically whenever Windows 10 wants to make out a call to the internet, it has to go through Remnux. Now I'm going to simulate as if there is internet on the machine uh, on Remnux uh, by using the fake DNS, fake DNS uh, tool, right? And then what I want to do is I want to open a new window and I want to simulate INET sim. Basically, I want to simulate all these ports and connections to the internet. I want to capture everything that happens on it. So here we have the SMTPs, HTTP, and all these other POP3, FTP, secure HTTP, and they're currently running. So whenever we open the file, everything that will be recorded here in terms of network traffic. At the same time, we want to open Wireshark. Why yeah. a shark? Okay, let's open it here. And we want to capture on interface ENS33. That's the connection. That's where we're going. We want to start off the capture here. Okay. So this is running, this is running, and this is running. Now we can go back to the Windows 10 machine. I'm just going to move Process Hacker, Procmon, sorry, on this side. And I want to filter a few things. So we'll filter under the Operations tab. First of all, under Architecture, 32 bit, since we know that. The executable is 32 bit. And then operations, process create is what we want. Again, operations. We know that there's some funny stuff happening in the registry. So. Just create maybe register query key write file. Where is it? Write file. Okay, create file. Registry set set value. Okay, and then we know the process name of the file itself.
Okay. Uh, let's try like that. Okay, and now we record. And then these are all ticked. Okay. Let's see what happens. Hold on, let me just try and run it. Okay, there it is. This is recording. Okay. It's doing something. It's going to take a few minutes now. It's going to start encrypting our files, encrypting them. Let's see the process tree. There's definitely stuff happening. Oop, there we go. There's the ransom note. Server ransomware, your document photos, databases, and other important files have been encrypted. Blah blah blah. There's the the links to the addresses. Yeah, and basically everything should be encrypted right now. Yeah. Desktop has changed. Let's just stop that for now. We don't need that. Here are the two files, Moshta MSHTA is the file that has been spawned. Okay, let's go to the Remnux machine and stop the capture. Oh wow, look at that. Just stop that. Okay. Okay, so everything is encrypted. And we see all these DNS requests that have been made from the file itself. Look at that. Oh, wow. Okay, we're not looking at the marvel.local. That's us. That's us. LDAP, since it's connected to a domain controller. Microsoft.com, that's us. But what is not us is if you go down all the way to the bottom. That's not us. That's from the file. That's from the file. That's from the file. Chain.so, that's not us. That's from the file. Okay, and if we try and search for the DNSs, there we are. Chain.so. bitapps.com, btcblocker.io, API, block cipher, and all that. Okay, so now we can take those uh, domains and block them in our SIM system or firewalls or whatever we have protecting us. And here we will try to extract that all that data so hold on first we need to select the columns we need to make sure that the thread ID is there yes and then save it comma separated values and we need to make sure that the path is 
on our desktop so it's easy for us to use so we need to go into the C drive it's very slow now huh? did we kill the process? should have just killed it uh, let's just kill that okay killing it Okay. It's very slow. So from Kessel. Okay, so the file is downloaded, it's here. Let's try prop dot and try and get a visual at least on the on the file proc moon it's going to take some time perhaps okay what process are we looking for silver refresh okay it took a while for that to spawn, but there it is. Okay, and what we can see here, it's, uh, let me zoom out. It's very big, the graph is very big, but the root is server.exe, which is our malware sample. So what we can see here is it did make some changes, some registry changes. That's the pathway to the registries. There's a file that was spawned, ping.exe, uh, and we can see the way it encrypted all the files. So there's create file, create file, create file, HTA, all these, read this. That's where, in all the directories, when it's uh, when it's encrypting it, it's creating also a text file with the read this. You know, in every in every folder, I guess we should have that read this file we have it here read this we have it here imports read this we have it here we have it everywhere basically and from process monitor we can also view this under the process tree mm. okay so in process tree, if we go down, there it is, server.exe, so you can see what is spawned the mshta.exe, cmd, ping is here, task kill, con host, that's the notepad. Okay, so basically what we learned from this is, is that we have the hashes of the file, we learned what system architecture it is, we learned the, whether it's an executable or not, uh, since we have the hashes we can now block it in our uh, security tools to make sure that it doesn't get executed anymore in our environment. Uh, we also know what registries it created, what files it encrypted. Um, for further reading, what we can do is we can search uh, based on the hash and based on the functions that it's doing, uh, whether it has a decryption key, whether it can be decrypted, uh, and if we are in this similar situation, how we need to act. So now this is very basic, very basic malware analysis. We're not going deep at all in this, but at least we now know that this is in fact ransomware. It's not some other file type. Um, and we know now how to act. So yeah, I hope I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you did like it, indeed, just please like uh, uh, the video, share, subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys. Happy hacking and uh, happy hunting.